one of their um, one of our major things. This would be, uh, uh, I guess we call this New Life Ministries uh, television. Uh, this was this was exciting because we had this uh, opportunity to go on cable TV, and cable TV was uh, big back then because we were just you know it was just something new breaking in the local television network, and uh, you tied it in uh, actually hardwired it right to your building. And we had somewhere around, uh, I think they said uh, 5,000 viewers that, you know, were tied to uh, Time Warner. And so we had uh, a small little studio. We set it all up, and the gymnasium was also our uh, sanctuary. So uh, all the chairs were underneath the stage. We'd bring the sta uh, all the chairs out for Sunday services and Tuesday services, put the chairs back in. It would be a gymnasium for the school for the rest of the week. Uh, and so we had our TV cameras all set up for that. Then uh, one day I was working as uh, I was filling in and editing the magazine, and I was in the dark room. We had our own dark room set up. We had everything in the printing uh, in the printing department, and uh, it was one of the most unusual things I'd ever heard. Uh, as I was working in the dark room, I heard a voice. Now I know it was the voice of the Holy Spirit, but uh, I didn't know then. And then I heard this voice that said, call channel 10, which was, uh, at that time, I believe it was ABC or NBC, I'm not sure. And uh, that's all I heard, call channel 10. And uh, I went into the senior pastor's office, and he was right next door to the printing office. And I told him, I said, you know, I just heard a strange thing, boy, it's kind of scary. He says, call channel 10. And uh, he said, well, I don't know what that means, but... Uh, if you hear it again, uh, maybe you ought to call it. And I said, I wouldn't know what to say. Well, I can't tell you, he said. So I went in, and lo and behold, a few minutes later, I'm working in the dark room, and I hear, call channel 10. Now, I'm not making this up, all right? This will sound like it, but I'm not making it up. So uh, I hear the voice. So I go over, and I open up the phone book, and I look it up, channel 10, and I call, and I don't know what I'm going to say. I just don't know. I, I just, I'm obeying what I hear, okay? I'm obeying. So I called Channel 10, and as I called Channel 10, the words came out of my mouth. I didn't know I was going to say these words. I did not know anything I was going to say. So I called Channel 10, and I, when they answered, I said, who handles your uh, public relations uh, television? Uh, and they said, oh, that would be Mary Brabham. Uh, let me put you through. I'm thinking... Okay, I didn't know there was even a division like that. So uh, a few couple seconds later, Mary gets on the phone and says, This is Mary Brabham, can I help you? I said, Yes, Mary. And again, here that comes again. It says, How would you like to have the most up-to-date religious show that is built all around local people in a local area and will tie the whole thing together, how that the church and the uh, business world and the political world can work together. And she said, this is the strangest thing. She said, do you know that I just walked out of a meeting just now and we voted to take uh, Jerry Falwell off because he became too political and it was getting too controversial for a non-paid uh, program to be on uh, what, we're, what we're doing with public relations. And uh, she said, I want you to bring a pilot down here next week. I said, okay, no problem. And I hung up. And I was thinking, what did I just do? I went in and talked to the senior pastor, and I said, you know, uh, they want a pilot down there. And I said, uh, what's a pilot? I said, I, I think it is a sample of what we'll do. And they said, bring a format. And I said, uh, format would probably be what we're, how we would set the show up. So he was saying, how in the world are we going to do that? We don't even have a TV camera. We don't have anything. So he said, oh, wait a minute. There is this fellow down at the end of the building and is renting one of our rooms down there, and he has this television camera with a recorder, and it's a black and white camera, I think, and a color recorder, and he puts his on cable, uh, he goes down locally and puts it on a cable. Maybe we could use his operation. 
So we went down and explained. I'm trying to hurry this. We went down and tried to explain it. Uh, he said, sure, I'll help you out. Uh, and it was uh, Dick Countermine. I remember that. And Dick uh, put this little thing together. We put this over in the corner. We got a couple of uh, uh, singers, musicians, uh, put them in a little corner in this room. And then we invited a couple of uh, one of the politicians locally to come and share his vision for the city. And uh, we put this all together and it was, uh, we took it down. And I remember this day was so, oh man, it was really nerve wracking. I walked into Channel 10 and they took me, introduced me to Mary. We went in this room and here's all these beautiful uh, uh, displays of project, uh, the camera or the uh, TV uh, sets. And they got them all over, the, all over the place. And I'm looking at these and oh my goodness, look at the quality. Look at the quality. I know ours has got glitches in it. It's black and white. Oh man. So I'm embarrassed without saying anything. And I'm thinking she's going to throw me right out of here. And I go up, I hand it to her and she said, let's see what you got. Put it in. And she just stared at it. It was a half hour long. She said, I want it just 30 minutes long. So it was a half hour long and watching this and watching this, I'm thinking, oh boy, am I ever, I need to crawl out of here. I need to crawl out. So, uh, it comes to the end. She hits it off, takes this brief thing out and hands it to me. And she said, I love it. I love it. It's exactly what we were looking for. I said, how can you say that? I said, look at the quality here and the quality here and what you're talking about. She said, oh, I don't care about that. She says, we're going to give you the best uh, director in the state. We're going to give you Peter Hess. Uh, it's our cameras, our equipment, everything. All you got to do is bring the format and bring your people down. And you set up the stage, you set up the whole thing the way you want. Oh my goodness, I just, you don't know the, the, the feeling and the responsibility now of having this in two weeks time. And uh, long story short, it went on almost 10 years. And it developed into one of the biggest things that we've had. We had 250,000 viewers and we traveled all over. Eventually we had our own cameras and they told us, look, you don't even have to come into our studios, uh, studios anymore. Take your cameras. They're high quality cameras, Hitachi's. Take them and, and uh, bring in the, the final product. That's all. And we'll plug it in every single morning on Sunday morning. We ended up doing a uh, TV special, a one hour special for Christmas. And uh, I might tell you that. I don't know if we can do that or get time or not. But these are just some of the things. All right. How this all exploded. And that was on for... Uh, all these years, and many, many people saw us, and we'd go into restaurants, hey, there's Reverend, hey there, how you doing, how you doing? And it's like, you, you got into their lives because of the type of program we put on. It wasn't uh, religion, all right? It was relationship, how that we tied in with all of these people in their jobs, and they explained their jobs, and then we talked about how God felt about their jobs. It was beautiful. It was beautiful.